Hey guys, what's up? It's uh, Jacob here again, and uh, today I'm going to do another uh, video of the uh, server rack. I'm going to go ahead and go over some uh, different stuff today. Now, it's a lot quieter than it was in my last video, which was the first video I made on the rack, uh, because it's nighttime and it's really late. And um, as of now, I don't actually have any services running, like web services or anything, so I don't have to keep anything running 24 7. But since nobody in the house is using internet right now, um, the firewall and everything can be shut down so the only thing that you hear is just the uh, packet shaper fans and the uh, standby fans for the uh, Dell Power Edge 1850 those power PSU fans watch my uh, 1850 tear down the little uh, review of that server and you'll see why those fans run all the time it's pretty stupid but anyways today I'm gonna go over the uh, network topology of this we're gonna go ahead and just kind of explain how everything's wired up here because I kind of gave you a little rundown but um, there is a lot kind of going on here. It's not like your standard home network. So I'm just going to go ahead and explain it in greater detail. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give a general uh, quick sum of it for those of you who don't know how this stuff works. So here's a, a great example of a network topology, just a very, very, very general um, network. So we have the cloud there. That represents the Internet. So that's everything on the internet. That's everybody else's servers, computers, everything ever connected, you know, in the World Wide Web, the internet. You know, that's that's what that cloud is. So then there's my network right there, and this is basically represented as a house. That's everything here. My network is the local area network. That's all these servers, but it also includes not just all these servers, but the computers in the house. And then once it hits this wireless router, that breaks off into you know, everybody's game system, everybody's cell phone, media devices, everything like that. So that is all represented by the local network. Um, and that's what that house is. So, and then all that is connected to the firewall. So that's what the firewall is. And the firewall basically protects us from what's out on the internet because the internet is very dangerous. There's lots of stuff that can get you into trouble. So there's, you know, lots of things that can really hurt your actual you know, um, equipment and everything on here it can really screw you on here if you don't have a good firewall. So, um, basically, that's how we're hooked up. Uh, we have the uh, internet, it goes to the firewall and it goes to our LAN. Now, our firewall is actually a little bit more advanced than just a firewall. Most people, um, here, let me show you guys how it works. The internet is actually the, that modem right there. So, this is the WAN, the wide area network. So, this comes in from Time Warner. And we have 15 megabits per second down, 1 megabit per second up. Like I said, we're probably going to be upgrading that soon once I get my web servers and stuff going. But anyways, that comes in. And most people, the average home is just going to come from the WAN. And it's going to go to the internet port on like a wireless router like this or like this. Well, um, and that would provide pretty much everything. This is like an all-in-one package. I mean, you know, it, it takes the internet and it has a firewall built in it. It has all the good stuff, DHCP and, you know, a password protection and stuff like that. Anyways, it's very basic, but it, it gets the job done. And for most people, that's that's fine. But in our case, uh, it, you know, just a firewall isn't quite good enough, you know, for all this. So we do have a firewall, but it's got many advanced features so that it doesn't... Sometimes firewalls can go against you, you know. They can, they can stop you from doing stuff that you don't want them to stop you doing. And you have to go in there and set permissions and crap, and it's not, you know, these firewalls aren't the greatest for that. So what it does is it comes out of this WAN, and it goes into this box here, and this is our firewall. So, and uh, I'm going to actually pull up this network topology now. This is an actual network topology graph of our network in great detail. So there you go, you have the internet there, and then it goes to these three pieces right here. Now you notice there's a box around them, I kind of drew that in pen. But there's the firewall, there's the router, and there's the proxy server. These are kind of all built in this box right here. So this box isn't just a firewall. And that's what I'm saying is, this is running PFSense. Uh, I forget what version it is, but um, it's running PFSense, and that allows us to do lots of stuff. It's a very powerful piece of software. So our WAN comes in here from the internet. That's that cloud there. comes in from the modem. And then it goes into that box. And this box does uh, proxy for caching. It has a squid proxy built in it. 
And basically what that does is it stores web pages, it stores everything that you go to. So let's say you go to an internet page and there's a bunch of pictures on there. It has a hard drive inside here and it basically stores everything whenever you go to a web page on this server as well or on this, uh, you can call it a server, it's pretty much a server. And what it does is it stores it on the hard drive in there so that way next time I go to visit that site or anybody in this house goes to visit that site, it doesn't actually have to load them from the internet again. That saves on bandwidth, it saves on um, you know, time, it, it, it's a lot faster to load it. So it just has to pull it from the hard drive and then just put it back into the LAN rather than actually going and requesting it again through the network. So it's it makes things a lot faster. So that's what the proxy server is. And then it has a router also built in here because this isn't just a firewall. It comes out of the firewall and it has DHCP. So it assigns addresses to everything. Um, so this gives out DHCP. Um, and then what happens is it comes out of there and as you can see it comes out of those three things which is that one box those all represent that one box and it goes into the packet shaper so that just comes straight out goes into the packet shaper this pretty much is just like think of it like an electric meter on the side of your house it just monitors everything all the data that comes between not, not it doesn't monitor all the local data it monitors only data that goes between our local network as you can see and the internet so anything that comes from the local network to the internet is going to be monitored through the packet shaper. Okay, the packet shaper goes straight into the 100 megabit switch. That's this guy right here. This is a 100 megabit switch, and this pretty much goes to everything else. Okay, as you can see, the 100 megabit switch goes to everything. It goes to our radio router, which is that guy up there. It goes to our web servers, our two web servers, our file server, and then our last server, which is like I said, database and proxy. That's the 1850, the Dell Powerage 1850. There's a box around it because it represents one unit. There's two functions in one server. So there's five servers there. They're all connected to the 100 megabit switch, as is the wireless router. Oh, I forgot to put the printer on here, but the printer would be just connected to the 100 megabit switch as well. But uh, that doesn't really matter much. Um, and then there's a gigabit switch. The gigabit switch is also connected, as you can see, all the way up and around to the 100 megabit switch. So the gigabit switch and the 100 megabit switch are connected to each other. That's that red wire you see there going between the two switches. And then all the servers, just the servers, are connected to each other um, in the uh, gigabit switch. You can also see up here the load balancer. The load balancer goes to the 100 megabit switch and the gigabit switch as well. So it can have fast um, communications with the server. So all the servers and the load balancer are connected through gigabit and 100 megabit. So they have both switches. And then everything else is just pretty, you know, general stuff like the computer that just goes to 100 megabit. The router goes to 100 megabit. And then there's all your media devices. We have a phone, a laptop, media player. It says a PlayStation. Looks more like an Xbox to me. And then a phone. All that crap. All that stuff is stuff that runs wirelessly on the radio router. So that's all being dealt through the, the router right here. Um, what's really nice about that is because that's what everybody else in the house is using. I can put traffic shaping or packet shaping on the um, on the radio router and I can limit it so I can say they can't have more than you know 500 kilobits per second up speed so that the, all those devices don't suck up my up speed for these servers. So that's what's really nice is I can kind of limit all the mobile devices and crap from sucking up bandwidth. I can limit any one device on the network from taking up bandwidth. So that's pretty much how everything's connected. Um, one thing I did leave out is the fiber switch and the fiber switch the reason I didn't show you the fiber switch is because um, it's basically just it's not really it's not even a switch it's a converter but it, it really is the same topology like okay let's say there's the um, workstation that's the computer in our in our den um, and it has a line going from the 100 megabit switch to the workstation well what actually happens is the workstation that you see there is the computer, it's the home computer, and um, it actually comes out of here, out of the 100 megabit. It goes and it's converted into fiber through here, and then once it gets into the den, it's reconverted through one of these boxes back into a copper. So it pretty much is just like running a really long copper line, but you're running a fiber line, so you don't have the losses, you know? But it is the same thing as just connecting a really long copper line. But um, nobody in their right mind would connect, you know, copper line that long. You would want to run a fiber line. So that's why we have these fibers 
but there's nothing fancy going on there. It's just basically really long copper lines. Think of it like that. But um, that's pretty much it for how all this is connected. Um, I'll go ahead and point out each one of these devices. So we again, we have the internet. That's going to come on the modem up there. We have this firewall and the proxy server and router. That's all built in this box here. And then you have the packet shaper. That's this box there. And then um, it also has the web man management port like I showed you guys before. The 100 megabit switch. So it goes all the way up through here into the 100 meg switch. There's the gigabit switch right there. Um, and then there's all these servers. So the two web servers. Those are these two guys here, the Dell Power Edge 1750s. The two file servers, that's the 2950, that's the really big one. And then the 1425, that's just for like a media file server for my personal server. And then there's the uh, database, which is MySQL and Squid Proxy. That's on the Dell Power Edge 1850 box here. So, and uh, of course I couldn't forget the load balancer. That guy right there is uh, this right here, the NetScaler. It's not on right now, but there's the LCD and everything for it. And um, no, the web servers do not connect directly to it. So it's not like they have a, a dedicated line and it goes to the web load balancer and then that goes to the switch. The load balancer is literally just connected to the switch like everything else. So I'll show you guys how that works. It's all software. It's pretty cool how it works. Um, but yeah, and it can also connect to it through gigabit. And by the way, guys, the one thing I didn't explain is these servers here, all my servers, again, they have two network cards. I explained that before, but the first um, port on them is 100 megabit, and these are all static addresses. So they all have static addresses. All the servers have static addresses, just like they should on the first port. The second port, however, is DHCP. So the, the gigabit ports are DHCP. So that's all assigned addresses. So they will be different depending on what order you turn on the servers in they'll be given the lowest, the next lowest DHCP address available. But, um, yeah, so they all have a static address. That's where they host from. That's 100 megabit. And then they have a quick, you know, fast local communication address, and that is DHCP. And they're all IPv4. Um, I do have IPv6 enabled, but, of course, I don't really use that because it's just not quite that time yet. But um, that's pretty much it for the general explanation of the topology of how this is all hooked up. Um, Next, we'll get into you know more advanced things like exactly how each box is set up. Like, we'll actually take you to a, a secure shell screen of each one of these servers and just basically show you what's running on each box. And then, if I really feel like it, I'll show you how I set up each and every single server, how I set up the web servers and load balance them and everything to make this uh, website and stuff that I do. Um, I am hopefully going to be getting my website up soon. It's going to be, I still own the, the domain techgeekforums.com. And I'm going to make a forum website to go with my YouTube channel. And that will actually start out running on the 1750 and it will host everything by itself. It will do file storage, database storage and everything. And I'm just going to run that till it becomes a problem. Until it gets too overloaded. And then I'll do the uh, load balancing and everything. But I have everything hooked up and ready to go. But I'd prefer to just run it on one single server as long as I can. Then when it starts to become too much, uh, we'll spread it along all uh, four servers, excluding the 1425, because it has nothing to do with the website. But that's pretty much it for this, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that little explanation of the topology of this rack. And um, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and shoot them to me uh, on my... Uh, uh, an inbox or a comment or whatever or if uh, the website's up go to techgeekforums.com like always guys have a good one